right, good morning, you guys. I'm so excited you're here. I hope you guys had a lot of fun last week. This week we're starting in May again and we're talking about being unstuck, okay? I heard there is sticky stuff to do. So you know what, I'm prepared. I have got my goggles. I'm ready to go have some fun. Let's go see what's going on this morning. Let's go. Thanks, Miss Karen. Hey, everybody. My name is Mr. Paul and I'm so excited that you're here with us this week. Is this your first time with us? Uh, if it is, you're in for an amazing time, a fun time, learning some stories from the Bible, which we call the Big God Story. And then we have a game time, so you should have your whole family involved in that. Are you ready for some fun today? I hope so. So kids, what day is it? Well, it's Sunday, yes. But also, it is what? Special day. Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day to moms out there. Kids and dads, say it with me. Happy Mother's Day! Uh, also say with me this, home is where your mom is. Isn't that true? And some of you may not have moms in the home, but your dads are special too, even on Mother's Day. So I want moms actually right now though to plug their ears. Kids, Remember to do special things for your mom all day. Well, all week for that matter. We have some things that you can do for her. So look for those extra activity page sections on the web page and do those special things for your mom all week, but especially today. Well, we're talking about determination this month. Your mom has had a lot of determination throughout your life and over the years, and God wants you to learn from the Bible this month that determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. So last week, our bottom line was keep going even when it seems impossible. Remember our big God story where Jesus gave his orders to the disciples to share God's love with others and to share the good news about Jesus? We learned we can keep going with determination because we know God is with us. You may be wondering why I have this basket. Have you seen a dog try to get something out of a container and he gets his head stuck in that container? Well, that happened to our dog once when I was a little boy. No matter how much he shook his head, the basket just would not come off. He needed to get some help to get that off. And sometimes when we try to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus, we get stuck, but in different ways. One way is that we get stuck being like maybe everyone around us, our brothers and sisters that aren't at that time trying to be like Jesus. We get stuck and we want to be like Jesus, right? Because we're best when we're like Jesus. So sometimes we need to get unstuck from being like everybody else around us. But God can give you determination whenever you get unstuck, he can get you unstuck from that situation, any situation. What are some sticky situations you can think of? What does it mean to be in sticky situations? Well, here's Miss Pam to help us see more about that. All right. Hi, friends. I'm Miss Pam. I'm so excited you're here with us for Virtual Chapel Hill Kids. It's so much fun being in your living room. I love it. We're talking about determination this month. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you start. In life, we can get into some pretty sticky situations. This whole stay-at-home situation right now might seem pretty sticky for you. Aren't we grateful that God sent His Holy Spirit to give us the determination we need to get unstuck? We can determine to have the right attitude because of the Holy Spirit and to follow Jesus, even if we're just hanging out at home. All right, it's time for our game, Don't Trip on Your Tongue. Let's see how determined you all are at keeping your tongues from getting twisted and stuck on these ferocious phrases I'm about to unleash on you. I'll start out saying the phrase nice and slow so you can hear it and say it back, and then we'll try to say it three times fast. We'll see what happens. Are you ready? All right, our first phrase. The really rad rhinoceros ran out of raspberries. Are you ready? Let's say it three times fast. The really rad rhinoceros ran out of raspberries. The really rad rhinoceros ran out of raspberries. The really rad rhinoceros ran out of raspberries. Pretty good, you guys. Are you ready for another one? Okay, you should make your parents say this with you. 
Big Bully Billy better be nicer to Betty. Ready? Big Bully Billy better be nicer to better. Big, 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 oh, I failed already. I hope you guys did a better job. All right, here's another one. Sally's out of seashells, so she now sells sandwiches. Sally's out of seashells, so she now sells sandwiches. Sally's out of seashells, so she now sells sandwiches. Sally's out of seashells, so she now sells sandwiches. Whew, I did better that time. I hope you did too. Okay, here's our last one. Purple platypuses pick pink peonies. Ready? Purple platypuses pick pink peonies. Purple platypuses pick pink peonies. Purple platypuses pick pink peonies. Oh, I give up. They're too hard. What I don't want you guys to do is give up when it comes to following Jesus. That takes determination, right? All right, remember, we're doing slime at home and have your parents check the website for those super fun games I put up there because I want you guys to have some great family time and I want you to get messy and slimy doing it. And make sure that you send in videos or pictures to our Facebook page. And Mr. Paul might choose yours to put in our video for next week. So hopefully we'll see you out there on the internet. Speaking of Mr. Paul, it's time for some really awesome worship. See you later. Hi again, kids. So I'm so excited to sing and worship God with all of you today. Are you ready? Did you know we are created actually to bring praise to God, created to worship? Our lives were meant to do this. And it actually is something we could either choose to do or choose not to do it. We can sing a song without actually singing it to God or worshiping Him, but let's decide to do that. And no matter what sticky situation we might be in, God can still be worshiped. We can still offer him a song that expresses how much he is worth to us. Listen to these words from Psalm 100 verses one through three. Shout for joy to the Lord, everyone on earth. Worship the Lord with his gladness. Come to him with songs of joy. So God is good. I am determined to not stop singing praises to him every day, no matter what situation I'm stuck in. So sing with me, can't stop, won't stop.
So is that fun, kids? We're giving our worship to God. And sometimes it looks like just focusing on Him, quieting down all the other voices and noises in our life, and just allowing Him to speak to our hearts through a song. So whatever you're facing today, know that you can trust God. You can put your faith in Him because He is the greatest, He is the best, the one and only, super wonderful God. So let's get up and sing this song for Him. Hey, you guys, it's Miss Karen again, and I'm really excited to intro the story for you this week. So I want to talk about the bottom line because I want to want, want you guys to watch for it in the story. Our bottom line is God gives you what you need to keep going. And right now, I think that is really important. We're all going through things that we've never gone through before. So God is who's going to give us the strength to keep going. Our life app, which is what we talk about in the story, is how we apply God's word to us. Our life app for this month is deciding it's worth it. <laughs> Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. So I know sometimes I start a lot of things and I may not finish them, but you know what? With determination, I can finish what I'm doing. And our basic truth, which I absolutely love, is I can trust God no matter what. So when things are kind of scary, know that you can trust God no matter what. So our story last week, we learned that Jesus gave his friends and disciples a very important job. He told them to share about what they had done with the whole world. And here's the thing, the job wasn't just for the disciples. 
We have the same mission today, and we can share how much God loves everyone by showing His love and by telling others about Jesus. The other thing is the job wasn't just for the disciples, it was for all of us. We have a job to do, but Jesus promised His friends that God would send a gift to help us, to help them accomplish their mission. He said they would soon have the help of the Holy Spirit. So after Jesus made this promise, He left the disciples to be with God in heaven. The believers were sad because Jesus wasn't with them anymore, but they believed that Jesus had promised would come true. And this is where we start our story today. So I want you guys to have your listening ears on, pay close attention, listen with your heart because God always has a special thing for each and every one of us to learn from his story. So here we go. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 41. The room was crowded. Over 100 followers of Jesus gathered, sat on the floor, or knelt to pray. Peter, always quick to take charge, may have led them. Lord, you told us to wait in Jerusalem. You promised to send your Holy Spirit. Now, just before Jesus had gathered his closest friends at the Mount of Olives and instructed them to tell everyone about him from Jerusalem to every nation on earth. But then, right before their eyes, he had been taken up to heaven. You've given us a huge job. We don't know how to do it when you're not here with us. So please, help us. The room stilled as everyone waited, even though they weren't exactly sure what they were waiting for. James and John may have been near a window. Getting windy out there. I'll just close the shutters. I don't think that sound is outside. Uh, everyone, stay calm. As the sound, like wind, rose even higher, a burst of light appeared in the center of the room. It flickered like a fireball, breaking into individual flames. <gasps> what on earth? I don't think it's from Earth. As the group watched, transfixed, the flames separated and skimmed out until a tongue of fire stood over the head of each believer in the room. Is this? It must be. God's Holy Spirit. As the Spirit of God filled the room and the heart of each believer, something even more incredible happened. Soon, the believers realized what was going on. God has given us the power to speak other languages. Immediately, the believers went out to join the crowds who had gathered in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. Now, these Jews traveled to Jerusalem from many regions and countries where a variety of languages were spoken, so they were shocked to hear the believers talking about Jesus in words they could understand, and each believer responded in their own language. Aren't these people from Galilee? Yes, so how do we hear them in our own native languages? We've come from all over. I've met people here from Parthia, Mesopotamia, Asia, Egypt, Libya. But these Galileans are talking about God's wonders in our languages. What does it mean? I think it means they're a little loopy. Loopy? One fish short of a lunch, if you know what I mean. Peter heard the doubters in the crowd, so he gathered the rest of the disciples and made his way up to the very front. My fellow Jews, hey, people! Jesus of Nazareth was a man who had God's approval. God did miracles, wonders, and signs among you through Jesus. Long ago, God planned that Jesus would be handed over. You nailed him to the cross, but God raised him from the dead. The crowd listened as the Holy Spirit gave Peter the words to say and helped them understand. Jesus has received the Holy Spirit from the Father. This is what God had promised. It is Jesus who has poured out what you now see and hear. God has made him both Lord and Messiah. Many people were deeply moved by the words Peter had spoken. So what do we do now? 
All of you must turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I, I want to be baptized. Me too. Me three. Then let's get started. That day, 3,000 people believed in Jesus and were baptized. With the help of the Holy Spirit, Peter and the disciples were already beginning the big job of telling every nation on earth about Jesus, even before they left Jerusalem. It's already time to launch into a new week of living out and learning more about the big God story from today. We had fun learning about the Holy Spirit with you today. We hope you had a great time with us. What a great morning we had together, right? So remember to do the Remember Verse Challenge. Have your parents send me your videos, put them on the Chapel Hill Kids and Family Facebook page. You just have one week to get them done. We had several kids do it this last month and they all got their prizes delivered to their homes. And you can too. Don't forget the four main things you can use today and really all week long is download and print the Parent Cube pages, download and print the God Times, we have the activity pages that are there, and uh, then there's the Parent Q app, so make sure you utilize all of those all week. Next week, are you, uh, we're already excited about next week, we're learning this. We will learn to keep going even when it gets tough. Boys and girls, we love you and we pray for you every day. Keep well, but most important, keep following Jesus. He can be trusted to keep us going even when we get into sticky situations, even when it seems impossible. So bye kids. <laughs>